Now you gotta make me look good, Joe. Oh, no, <laughs> Get the focus right. Get everything perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> the hard part is forgetting it's there. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like you gotta just zone in. I was I was just telling Laura because we were talking about the game last night. Just like it's so much harder to lose when you love the group. Mm -hmm. You know, like the humans make it hard. Whether you lose to a more skilled team or not, it's like when you lose a group of seniors that you really have cared about. It's that like, does make it difficult. Oh, that yeah. one just hurts your heart yeah. differently. That My does really goodness. make it difficult. Yeah, I was sorry to hear you guys lost. Yeah, that one's tough. But, um, yeah, I'm going to try to forget this exists. Forget we're on a microphone. Okay. It's just you and me in here. Okay. Nothing's happening. Um, along those lines, like, I get nervous when there's cameras around, like microphones, whatever it might be. Something about the layer of the universe that is posting it mm -hmm. makes me feel odd. I get that. You know what I mean? Um, what makes you nervous? What, what, what gets you, like, a little anxious? Um, I am fortunate that I am not a very nervous person. I do get anxious every now and then. Yeah. But I do try and tell myself that if I get anxious, like, the deep breath routine yeah. helps me a lot. And then I just keep telling myself, It'll all be okay. It'll all be okay. Um, and then, like, for instance, when we did, when boys volleyball mm -hmm. honored me a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. I do not like being the center of attention. Yeah. And that was a lot. And at first I did start to get a little anxious. And then all of a sudden I just told myself, just enjoy it. And once I did that, I just had the best time. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, just go with the flow. Because you can't always control everything and everyone around you. Right. So just go with it. Yeah. And then are the, I was okay. Are those like mantras for you? Like, it's going to be okay. Is that something you've told yourself for your yes. whole life? Sort of like. Yes. Is that something you heard from maybe your parents or grandparents yes. or something? My, parent, my dad always said, no matter what, it's going to be okay. Yeah. It, my brother has that energy. He's, really? He's such like a, he'll make a mistake and it's just like, oops, well, it'll be all right. Yes. You know what I mean? Just yes. move on from it. Yeah. Um, have you developed like a relationship with your breath? Is that something that you, when you take a deep breath, how active are you about that? Like, is it in through your nose, out through your mouth, sort of like the way that athletes are taught to mm -hmm. lower their heart rate? Or do you not think about it like that? No, I do. But I think mine is more, I am more aware of like, I'm just taking a deep breath in through my mouth. And yeah. then I even like hold it for five seconds. Oh, wow. Because that like almost makes me have to stop. It, it, does it like suck you into the present tense? It's like, um, I okay, was, we have to be here because yes. we've got to breathe now. Yes. Is that what it is? Yes, it's I think so. Like a, because all of a sudden you're like, okay, I have to breathe now. Yeah, and then yeah. It's like you almost forget why were you doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, did things make you nervous? Or have you always just had this sort of like, it'll be all right, I'm going to attack the next problem, attack the next. Um, I've kind of always had that. Um, my dad was a very calm person, and uh -huh. I think that's where I get it from. Yeah. And it was just no matter what we encountered it was just always going to be okay and you just you know my i was taught from an early age that you make everyone's going to make mistakes and it's what you do from there on out you know what you've learned from that and how you change things yeah will make everything okay yeah just make the next best decision exactly yeah, yeah. i started playing a solo sport called disc golf oh, have you uh -huh, heard of that yeah. before I've never played a solo sport before, but like when you make a mistake in a solo sport, you have to just approach the next shot, like whatever I can do on the next shot. Mm -hmm. the, it's sort of the same mentality of like face the next adversity, we got to go. It doesn't matter. Right. I, I actually grew up kind of with the opposite. My mom is a very much a worry wart, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you will. Like she's always ramped up, but that helps me stay calm in a, in a weird way. Like I'll think about if my mom was doing this oh my God, she'd be panicking. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. that kind of locks me in. Like that calms me down. Like she would be way worse off. And I do think, and it's funny <laughs> you know? to bring that up because I do think moms are much more warriors. My mom was a warrior. Yeah. And that, but my and dad would, my dad would always just calm her down and be like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. That yin and yang was probably cool to see right yes. in front of you growing yes. up. And so you preferred the way that your dad attacked life rather yes. than Yes. You, didn't, you didn't get yourself riled up worrying right. about Right. For some reason, that was just what I picked up on. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, growing up, you're sort of this name that had always been floating around. Like, my mom being here for so long and, and knowing of you, and, like, we'd run into you at the grocery store or something. Mm -hmm. And you just became this, like, first and last name in my mind as a kid that was, like, I, hadn't, I didn't really know you, um, but it was, like, Susan Harris. And, and I knew that almost like a hero's name. It was, like... 
the way it was always presented to me was that like she's this unsung hero on campus who does things behind the scenes is like a hardworking, diligent great human being and it was like i knew somehow I wanted to be like you before I knew you. Oh, that's so sweet. Which is an interesting, that's an <laughs> interesting way to grow up, having this like ancillary sort of character in your mind. Like, that's a hero I want to be like. And now to have known you and, and now to have worked with you and now sit in front of you, it's like when you meet your heroes, you realize why your mom talked about them that way. You know what I mean? You start mm -hmm. to put a face to all the stories and you start to kind of put it together. But a lot of those stories I don't have. So fill me in on like, where did you grow up? What, what was your family like? Um, I grew up in East St. Louis, okay. and then we moved to Fairview Heights when I was 10. So I went to St. Philip's Catholic School in East St. Louis until the fifth grade, then went to OLA in Fairview. And then um, when I graduated from grade school, I actually went to Altoff. And um, so I didn't start. I hate to hear that. I, I have to say. Yeah, it. I didn't start bleeding I hate blue to hear that. until I started working <laughs> that here. That makes me so sad. Um, well, you wore navy. Yes, but yeah, I did. one little yeah. crossover. One, one oh, color, yes. that hurts. That hurts and, my uh, heart. <laughs> but um, it's it is, so yes, it is funny. But I did go to school with your mom. Yeah, and that and um, but I do think having that Catholic background instilled a lot in me, and I think that is part of my calmness today. Yeah, and also part of why um, I'm okay with what I've been dealt with my cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, but it coming to work to a public high school then. It was a very big eye opener. Yeah. From ha I, I mean, I feel like I lived a sheltered life. You know? Really. I really do. I don't think I really came into the real world until I started working here, and because everyone I grew up with was really basically like me. Right. You know that we lived, we had a good medium income life. You know, didn't have everything you ever wanted, but you really didn't need for anything right. and that and then when I started working here and saw you know what some students go through just to live everyday life yeah um, but I think it also made me a much better person yeah it has to increase your empathy right away it's it like, did. there's no yes. choice you just see other humans and it's like that could have been me yes yeah yeah what so did your true. mom and dad do um, my dad worked for IBM okay and, Whoa. Um, yeah, yeah it was Ooh. It was um, back in the days when a computer took up the entire yeah, room. Yeah. As a matter of fact, just a little trivial fact here is that um, my dad was one, we were one of the first households to test a home computer. No way. What it was originally going to be. First in America? In, in, what do you mean? In, first for in the IBM? United States, so, yes. Oh my gosh. And that, because my dad was really high up as a, an engineer there. And, um, but what it was going to be, what they thought it was going to be was, uh -huh a keyboard you hook to your TV and that would be your computer. Oh wow. But then they found, you know, at that cuz at that time you made if, if you were lucky to have two TVs in your house, that was a lot of TVs. Yeah, and yeah. that well then they found out that wasn't going to work because, you know, somebody might want to watch TV, somebody might want to play the one video game you have. Right, right. And that and so then that's when they started to develop the personal computer with the monitor wow. and the keyboard and that but yeah we actually um had one Whoa, in what, our house what was your months. dad's name my dad's name was johnny vansko that's awesome that's yeah. so cool and what did your mom do um, my mom was a stay-at-home uh, oh, okay. wife and um, mother she actually they met my grandparents my dad's parents owned a grocery store down in um jones's park in east st louis okay and my mom was a cashier there wow and that's how they met Whoa. And then once they got married, my dad was in the Air Force to begin with. And then once he got out of the Air Force, he became, Whoa. Uh, or he went to work for IBM. Is your dad still alive? No, unfortunately oh, wow. not. I yeah. would have loved to have met your dad. He was, he was a very neat individual because, and this is where I get, like one of my philosophies in life is uh -huh. to try and help other people's lives yeah. be easier, be better, yeah. you know. And um, my dad before there was a charcoal chimney for charcoal, okay. <laughs> my dad took an old stove pipe and made one because he's like, when he would grill, he's That's like, so baller. you know, <laughs> yeah. I, there's gotta be an easier way. There like, has to be. I don't like putting, you know, the uh, charcoal fluid on it. Yeah. And he did it to where you put the newspaper underneath, but my dad always did everything like just what would make his life and his family's life better yeah. to where 
had he done something with that? <laughs> yeah, know? all those skills. Yeah, we would, we would be, uh, I'd be set for life. That's like my uncle Ronnie is super, super intuitive with hands-on. He can mm -hmm. build anything. He can do anything. And that's you, impressive. We're losing some of those skills, aren't we? I agree. We? Yeah, yes. like e even a, a simple one is like cursive. Mm -hmm. We're just oh, not even, yes. what? We're yes. just not even teaching cursive anymore. I know. And that's a silly way to say like we're not going to fix our own cars anymore. We're just going to pay somebody to do it. Right. You know, it's we're slowly slipping away from that. We're but don't losing you feel like for some hands-on things that it gives you such a feel of accomplishment? Oh, 100%. 100%. That it just makes you feel so much better. Like, I did that. 100%. You know? And there's a connection piece where um, my uncle and I built out my Jeep last summer to be able to take it on this huge trip. We converted it into like full-size bed inside the Jeep, pull-out drawers, oh, wow. solar panel, it, wild. But the coolest part of it was that I did it with him. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. something to that where we're fulfilled because we did it. We didn't just pay for it. Right. Um, and we're fulfilled because we did it together. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that and forms it's a such a bond. Have. Yeah. Yes. That's happening sort of slowly, and I see it in my generation sort of coming up is that if we, for example, want chocolate chip cookies, we don't call our grandma anymore. Mm -hmm. We Google it. You right. know? Which yeah. is like we're missing something there. You still I get agree. cookies, like the result is cookies. Right. And maybe they're better or worse, depending mm -hmm. on how you perform. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but there's something about that we didn't call our grandma that is lost. Right. The interaction. Yeah, you the know, ownership those stories of stories that totally. I, yes. we're, we're missing out on that. Yes. Do you have siblings? Um, I have three brothers. Um, one is deceased and I have one sister. I'm the baby of five. Okay. Yes. How is that? That's, um, a, that's a Catholic family. Yes. And yes, actually it, it was great um, because by the time... I became a teenager and a uh, little stuff my brothers had done. Mm -hmm. My parents were very laxed with me. <laughs> oh, wow. The gas pedal slowly stepped yeah. off. <laughs> yes. Was it perfectly like each sibling got less and less sort of? <laughs> I think a little bit, but then it was also. Or more and more lenient rather. Here, yeah. my best friends, like I'm the baby of five, but my best friends were all the oldest in their families. Okay. So I didn't really have a curfew. Which sounded cool, but what am yeah. I going to do after midnight by myself? Yeah. You know, so yeah. it was, um, I mean, so my parents, it was a little bit of a, you know, head thing that like, hey, we're going to be the cool parent for her and let her, but then yet they knew it wasn't like I was going to stay out till 2 a.m. because I had no one to hang out with. Yeah. So, yeah. I was, you know. I was the baby for a while until my mom remarried, but while I was the baby, there was always the argument of like when Marty got a BB gun, mm -hmm. like a Red Rider. It was like, oh, I kind of want one too. We're only two years apart. Should I get one now? Yeah. Like, can I get one when I'm seven? If he got one when he was nine, that was always that argument. Yeah, it, I actually have to say it was nice being the baby. <laughs> yeah, but did that foster a competitive environment? Or was were you guys all pretty loving? Or did, did you play sports growing up? Yes, um, and actually, no, we were very competitive mm -hmm. against each other. Yeah. yeah, We actually had a family co-ed softball team for years. Oh, and yeah. And then it was nice, like, once my nieces and nephews grew up that they played mm -hmm. too. But I'd, I'd say we were more, not really necessarily really competitive with each other, mm -hmm. but we stuck as a group and were competitive against those who were playing against us. 100%. Yeah. I was that way too. Marty and I love each other, but we've made each other better. Mm -hmm. and, and then when my parents, or when my mom remarried and then Garrett joined our family and now we're the Myers, um, he, it, we just pushed him to get better. It was like we all elevated each other, but we did want to, be better than each other. Right. Like when we play family basketball, it's gonna, you yeah. might catch an elbow. I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. 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 We locked yeah. in. Yeah, you're gonna be competitive, but you still wanna win. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. you do. Totally, I, yes. I grew up that way. You played sports growing up then? I did, I was um, mainly played basketball and tennis. Cool. Yeah. How long did you take that, through high school? Did um, you play at Altoff? I, I did, I only played basketball at Altoff for two years. I um I also played soccer in grade school, but yeah. when I went to high school, there was no girl soccer, oh. and that so had that have stuck because I have unfortunately been five foot eight since the fourth grade. Oh so wow! So I was very tall. Oh, you were huge yes. early. Wow! So everyone loved me on the fourth, soccer team. Fourth grade, five fourth grade. Eight? I was been five foot eight since oh I was my in fourth gosh. grade. So I was like the jolly green giant. <laughs> Imagine that. So that's ten years old. 11? Um, about 11, yeah. Oh, my 11, gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You were a beast. <laughs> yes. I was very You were dominant. Tall. You had yes. to have been. And that. So, um, but in basketball, I liked. 
I didn't love it in high school, unfortunately. Okay. Was that a personnel thing, or um, you just fell off the sport? You know, it was more, again, at the time, it, it was girl sports just weren't really the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like if we were going to use the, the gym or we were going to use the weight room and that, we had to be there at 6 a.m. every morning. And I have to say, I like to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. after two years, I was like, you know what? This is this, I'm just not having fun yeah. anymore. And then that's when I just decided to. And then we, um, some friends and I at Altoff, we actually did, um, uh, through Letterman Park, a girl softball team. Cool. And that we had a good, because so it was active more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I feel like I always try to find something competitive to do in my life. It keeps me that's like awesome. so centered. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel void sort of without those type of things. Do you, let's just jump in the deep end here. What, cause we already brought up the Catholicism. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on God? How, how has that changed your life or, or, um, I believe that having the beliefs I have is what has kept me calm. And mm -hmm. even when I was told that I have terminal cancer, mm -hmm. um, I, I know that's one of the other questions, but like I was not shocked by it. Mm -hmm. I've been battling cancer for 11 years. Right. Um, I knew at some point, especially after my last remission, that if it ever came back, it would be very hard to cure. And um, But my belief in God and that I do believe in an afterlife, mm -hmm. and um, to some this may sound a little crazy, but um, I actually believe I get signs from my mom and dad all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, matter of fact, a story I'll share that I haven't shared with many is... Um, about what, July, I was told that my cancer spread to my liver. Mm -hmm. I know when it's in your liver, that's really not good. Right. And that, and um, you know, I would see, get little signs from my parents. And when I say signs, I find pennies all the time, pennies from heaven. And mm -hmm. um, but I was confused, like, but what's what does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, I'm getting these. Does it mean I'm going to be seeing you soon? I'm not going to be seeing you soon. And um, one night. Um, my father has come to me in a few dreams before and, and he'll tell me it's going to be okay, Susan. There and it is. That, like, like when I need, when I do maybe need That's some so beautiful. Down. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, but my mom actually one night and my, I've never dreamt about my mom. And, um, I was strange. I was driving around shopping and then all of a sudden I went, Oh my gosh, I have to tell my mom, um, you know, I'm going to be home soon. And that, and um, so I, you know, pick up the phone and call her. And I said, Mom, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you, you know, I was going to be out later than I thought, and I'll be home soon. And all she said was, no, Susan, you're not coming home yet. Oh, my gosh. And, um, it, I just got goosebumps. And it was. So That's it, wild. Yeah. So that really Whoa. gives me a lot of strength. Yeah. Because, like, my motto right now is I'm not giving up and I'm right. not giving in. Like, right. I know I have a battle. But um, I'm really hoping I'm the person in a year that everyone's going, oh, my gosh, she's doing so well, you know, and that because I believe being positive and, you know, have, letting others around you help you and, you know, do what they can for you. And I take all the prayers I can get. But yeah. that sign from my mom just really, you know, made, That's me, beautiful. made me feel like, okay, yeah. I've got some time left. Because even if – so – I, I don't believe. I don't have beliefs. Okay. Um, even if it wasn't that, even if it wasn't God, for example, that was your own mind then, mm -hmm. if that's true, which is so powerful still, that you were able to do that for yourself through her wisdoms. Right. That you've acquired through her. That's just, that's incredible. Do you ever, so you said that you weren't shocked. Mm -hmm. Have there been times when you were shocked? Um. What did it feel like sort of like? Maybe the first time, or maybe sort of like early on. I, actually, probably the the most that I've been like maybe shocked that then scared me. Yeah. Was was this past July when they did a liver biopsy on me? I didn't tell anyone but my husband. Mm -hmm. Most of the time throughout this, I've told no one until I know the actual results, so that I have all the information. And, yep. Um, so I had had the liver biopsy something went a little bit wrong and I had to stay in the hospital overnight. Mm -hmm. Then I started to get anxious, like, if something happens to me, no one even knows I'm here but my husband. And then I would feel awful oh, yeah. for my family. Yeah. And that, so that's probably 
the most I've ever felt, you know, like shocked, like, oh, this is really serious. Yeah, it's interesting that you feel shocked and you're still thinking of others. That's what caused it. That's me. <laughs> yeah, that's you. It's like you didn't, you weren't even shocked for your own life. No, you were shocked it's true. at like, oh my God, who doesn't know? I need to tell. Right. Wow. And and like I've told people, you know, especially through East, and that is one of my goals. Once I found out I had cancer, was if I can make others feel comfortable around someone that has cancer or a serious disease, right? I feel like then it was all worth it. Yeah. You've really humanized what it means to just walk around with it. Right. And it, it's okay. I'm still me. Totally. You know, yeah. you know, everyone doesn't have to change their life to all of a sudden be like, what do you need? What do you need? Yeah. Just treat me like you've always treated right, me. Right. Right. Plus a couple extra hugs. Yeah. 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 Maybe a couple yeah. hugs. Now, I'm not <laughs> saying every now and then with my friends, I don't use the seed card and say, <laughs> you can't say no to me because I have Yeah. Cancer, yeah. You got to cash in your points because yes, you, you exactly. kind of earned them I sometimes. Use it for some yeah. Time. Yeah. Yes. But you don't want to flex the money. Right. Like you don't want to flex yes. the currency. Yeah. Yes. Very true. That's it's funny. Yeah. So since we're already there then, like what does that feel like when they're when they look at you and tell you it's terminal? Like sort of is that a T word for you, the way that you say the C word? Is it like you've been waiting to hear that one? Um or what yeah, did that feel like? Um that one was hard that was probably the hardest thing I've ever asked my oncologist. Mm -hmm. Um and I love my oncologist, Dr. Viscani, um, through Memorial and BJC. He's always been very open. He's been my oncologist for 11 years. And um, what really touched me was that it was hard for him to tell me. Oh. Like, I can't imagine having that job. Yeah. You know, and that. But, um, you know, and so then I asked, you know, like, what time frame in general am I looking at? Just I would like to know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've not read anywhere my actual termination date yet. Right. You know, and that. Right. And, you know, it could be anywhere from six months to a year. Okay. But I'm going for it's going to be longer. Yeah, you me know? too. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so it it was, like you said, it was hard to hear. I wasn't shocked to hear it, though. Right. How has your value in the present tense shifted, especially given now, but maybe back up to the beginning, like you first find out you have cancer. How did your value change immediately? Because you kind of knew you could handle it early on, or mm -hmm. was it, were you afraid of, it getting to the point it is now right away. No, um, I felt early on that I could handle it. You know, this is this is what we do for it. I should be okay. Right. You know, and then, um, uh, but like, unfortunately for me, I'm an oddity. I've had three different types of breast cancers in 11 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, it's, I just have one of those bodies that I do everything unusual when it comes to medical stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if I call my doctor for something, I don't can't tell you how many times I've heard, "Well, that's odd." <laughs> <laughs> like you just try things. Yeah. <laughs> no, or what it, do you mean? Like, like it'll just I will have strange things happen to my body, like especially side effects of medicines. To where he's like, "Oh wow, I've never seen that before." Like, unfortunately, one side effect for a medicine I was taking. Um, my jawbone on my left side of my mouth is exposed inside now. Okay. I have no um, skin, uh, skin gum, gum yeah, left right. over it. You know, and he said in his 35 years, he has never seen it happen. Wow. It's a possible to be an effect, but he's never had a patient that it happened to. Wow. But I would be that patient. Yeah, you're the and, one you know, in the, den you're the numerator. Am, but I'm okay. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I like the then, hey. You know, it can happen. Let's see what we can do for it. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying I don't ever have a pity party. You know, I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah. there have been times. Yeah, you know, you're human. Yes, there are times right. or maybe, you know, late at night to where, you know, I get sad about something. But for the most part, I'm like, this is what I've been dealt. This is my life. I'm going forward. I'm not, I figure I can either get on the bus yeah. And right over these speed bumps. Yeah. Or I can lay under the bus and let it run over me. Yeah. Have you seen Shawshank Redemption? Oh, yes. My dad always says, yes. get busy living or get busy dying. Yep. That, that's that always so been. That's so true. It's that and it's carpe diem and it's, it's we have little mantras like that too yeah. that, that that's awesome. kind of power us up. But you know how it's kind of silly that people will say like, well, if I found out I was going to die tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? They try to right. cake it in. And somehow what they're really saying is, I'm going to value the present tense much higher. Ha has your value in every moment increased? Um, I would say to an extent. But what I almost think is that I see the world differently. 
I think I just appreciate every little thing in life. And that has been from the beginning. And I've always felt like I like to live every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always felt that. But then once I was diagnosed, uh, it's, you know, the little things like um, my mom is no longer alive. She died six years ago. But um, that was the hardest thing I had to do was tell my mom I had cancer. Plus, my brother had cancer at the same time. So her oldest child and her youngest child yeah. both had cancer. And that broke my heart. Oh, my gosh. Having to tell her that. Um, but then it also, like, one thing I was happy for out of it is it really made me sit down with my mom and ask her questions that, you know, you just like, it's kind of like your mom's just always been in your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, but to really ask her, like, I, I realized, like, I didn't really know a lot about my mom's childhood. Yeah. When she was a teenager, she was just always my mom. Yeah. You know, so I feel very thankful for things like that. And it, my brother that had cancer, um, it gave us a very special bond. We had always been very close. Mm -hmm. But, you know, having a sibling going basically through the same thing you are at the same time. Right. But unfortunately, he lost his battle. You know, and that was tough because yeah. you do wonder why, why am I here? Why isn't he? You know, but yeah. that's not our decision. How do you think you made that, like, switch flip to just appreciate everything and, and just, like, have the courage to sit down with your mom? You, you know, know it's I mean? just, um, it's a good question. Um, it's just something that, like, it almost like a, a switch flipped in me. Yeah. You know, and that, and it was just, and I guess at the time, I thought, you know what, I have cancer, but none of us know if we're here tomorrow. Right. You know, and, then, right. and you do. And I mean, and as everyone says, life goes very fast. Yes, it does. It really goes fast. You know, it mm -hmm. really does. And you wish, you know, and as you're a teenager, the things that seem so awful when they happen to you, you know, you realize are so trivial down the road. Yeah. But that's also a part of life and growing up, you know. So yeah. it's just, yeah, it's just even today, every day I drive into work, it's just I enjoy looking around and I just enjoy the beauty of nature. Yeah. Like, I guess I... I sit back and I focus more on not the noise of life, but the beauty of life. Yeah, that's a brilliant way to say it. I, I uh, just got a motorcycle. I saw you the <laughs> other day, yes. And the reason I bring it up is I sort of mentally do this invisible handshake with death when I kick my leg over it and I'm ready to drive to school. And to your point, it makes me focus. Mm -hmm. It makes me have to do everything right. And then by the time I'm at school, I'm charged up with this energy that is like, let's absorb every adjective in the room. Like, let's take in the detail. Let's mm -hmm. take in the depth of the human being. I want It makes me want to ask more questions. Like, that's kind of that's what we're awesome. doing here, which is like, right. it's almost like I'm sitting down with my mom. It's like, I want to know before it's, that's before awesome. it's over. You know what I mean? And, we have a motorcycle, so I, I get what you mean. Yeah, that's there's, a, there's a sort feeling, of like, yeah. it brings you, it drags you into the present tense. You don't have yes. a choice. It makes you appreciate everything because it, you're one slip away. Right, you, you know have to I mean? be aware. Yeah, yes. and it's silly to say that those things are comparable, but sort of it brings you there. Oh, it no. takes you to like the... Definitely. We have to be perfect, sort of. We have to mm -hmm. take in everything we can. Um, how, how does it affect your hope in humanity in general, long term? All, going through all of these things, sharing the suffering with your family, and still having this much hope. I mean, you sit here with just like joy and hope. <laughs> how, how? Where does that come from? You know, it's just... I feel that if I am going to be negative or surround myself with negative people, it is not going to help me to be able to heal. Right. And I do feel, you know, it's right now I do feel like the world is a little crazy, but I also know that there have been times in my past that has happened in the world. And, you know, we go up a hill and then we come back down the hill. Yeah. You know, and there will be waves. And especially with the uh, pandemic we just had and no one knew how to deal with that. Yeah. You know, but it's I'm hoping that people realize when they say, like, well, when are we going to get back to normal life and regular life? We no longer have that life. Yeah. We have to accept our new normal. Mm -hmm. And, yes, you know, things are better being out in public and that. But you also, I, I just want people to be more aware. Like, you know, everyone was so nice to each other. I mean, I know we we're staying away from each other. Right. You know, or just people, 
you know, viewed people differently or like, oh, I should be more cautious washing my hands or I should do this, right. that we should still continue to do not what only is for our benefit, but what's for everybody else's benefit. The greater good. Yes. And totally. not just think of me, I, yeah. you know. I always tell my students, like, the people are the best part of this thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's awesome that we're back and back at school, but really what we're back at is human interaction. Exactly. That's what's back. Yes. So we need to really take that in. Yes. We're all talking to each other with characters only, like text and with exactly and calls even are sort of this medium that isn't quite this. Right. You know? And that's what I I think that one thing with so much negativity in the world right now is unfortunately our electronic devices. You know, it, it mm. really saddens me to walk across Central Terrace and probably ninety percent of the kids are, are on their phone, yep. not even looking what's yep. around them, even as they're walking. Yep. They're, you know, they're not paying attention to the yep. nature around them or anything like that. And that is the one thing I don't like is I really do feel that that yep. has brought us down as a society. And, you know, what you're reading, you're reading it how you're hearing it, yep. not necessarily how the person intended it to be heard and you know like conversing like this i love talking to people yep you know and there's just it's so much more personable and you learn so much more 100 as opposed to hey what's up you know yeah yeah you feel them in the room it's like we're not really capable of conveying 100 percent of our intent it's like we kind of aren't even that good at english yes. <laughs> you know we're just kind of animals yes. trying to figure this out yes but also when we're in person like this and you can feel the nonverbal sort of feelings it we get closer to 100 percent I you know, you creep. Yes. It's like maybe we're at 95% yes. where we're trying to convey ourselves with intent. Whereas over text, your max is 80% maybe mm -hmm. where you can't really even convey your whole message. Right. It's so and hard to get across. if the other person has misconstrued something, then that goes a whole new route. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then things aren't good. So. The bias stacks quickly. Yes, over, it does. Versus if, if you say something that maybe I don't understand, I'll just say, wait, what? Mm -hmm. You know, it's so simple as like, a, oh, I didn't hear you. Right. Versus over text, it's like, a, they meant to say that. They typed it. Right. Maybe you didn't even mean to say it. Like, there's no leeway to, for accidents. Like, you may say something you didn't really mean in person, you know? Yes. But you could feel it if I didn't really mean it. Right. I would just say, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, let me re-say it. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah, let me re-say it. Yes. You get a chance. Yes, true. It, do you feel like hatred is increasing? Like, do you think that... I mean, you've been through several cycles, and now you've seen this new wave, which is social media. Do you feel like it's going up, or do you feel like it's presented that it's going up? I do feel like it's going up. And even a bit of that is because of where my office is on campus, mm -hmm. and like where the girl, and it, I, I can't believe it, so many females, the, the language and the way they talk to each other, mm -hmm. there is just hatred. Yeah, and I, I, that really grates on me. And I will even get up from my desk and open the door and be like, "Why are we talking like that?" Yeah, you know why? Well, she said this or she said that. So what? Yeah, you know. But I do. I, I, I feel like people just can't let things go. You know, they just keep festering. And and another thing with social media, then you know, uh. Someone then sends it to someone else, and then that festers them. And yeah. you know, but I do have hope that it will be better. I'm hopeful too. I I, I feel like particularly guys don't compliment each other, mm -hmm. or, or even maybe both both genders, all of it doesn't matter. We're not really like you look great today, or you look strong. Have you been working out, or mm -hmm. you look healthy? Like what's going on? We're not quick to do that. We're quick to say something that gets secondary attention. I agree with Which you. Which is fascinating because it's, it's way more meaningful to tell someone something positive. Mm -hmm. Like when you look someone in the eyes, like a student walks in and maybe they're having an average or below average day and it's like, yo, those shoes are sweet. Boom, they're back. Right. And it's so simple. Like, I just think your shoes are cool. But that translates into a huge momentum for them. Right. You just never know how that little compliment yeah. made their day because they were having such a rough yeah, day. Yeah, and it's free. Yeah, to exactly. Do. It actually makes me feel good. Yes. Like it's almost selfish yes. like I feel good about this and it's going to make us have a better connection. Right. So duh, I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> it feels like why wouldn't I? Right. You know? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, when I um, 
every day I go from my office to the main office to do mail, mm -hmm. and um, it's after the bell rings at 8.30, but there's always a few kids out there. Every single student I walk past, I'm always, good morning, yeah. good morning, and some will not respond, but others will be like, oh, good morning. Yeah. You know, like, it's just refreshing. to know that someone started your day with a, I'm glad to see you here, Yeah. you know, because you don't, and even as adults. People have no idea. You know, you never know what someone else is actually going through. Hundred percent. And like you said, it's free. It's it does so not free. Hurt anything? It does not cost you anything. Just to give you. A it, it actually pays you, kind of. It, honestly. It makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. It's yes. interesting. Do you yeah. think that people are inherently good or evil, or maybe sort of is it a nature nurture? Where you stand on that? Um, I do think, for the most part, that people are good. I really do. Right. Um, I do feel that. There are some that they want to keep the hatred in them and they don't want to change. That's just the way they want to be. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to change it. And I learned a long time ago that you can't change someone that doesn't want to change themselves. Yeah. You know, you can't. And that, it's but exhausting. I, I do feel that um, for the most part, people are good. I, you know, unfortunately, um, like with drugs, like I have a, my sister had a best friend whose son um, got hooked and sweetest kid, brightest kid, but he could just never get unhooked no matter how many times he went through rehab. And finally his family had to do the like, Tyler, you can't come around anymore. Wow. You know, and it was very hard and that's hard, but you know, he wasn't willing to help himself. Right. And then, you know, to doing the stealing from his family and things like that. So it, I, but I also get that that's a disease, right? you know, but you've also got to get to the point to want to help yourself. Yeah. Some people don't even know what their passions are. And then they, it's like, they just find whatever gets them going, mm -hmm. you know, and some people find drugs before they find soccer right. or, or they find drugs before they find teaching or, right. or whatever it is. Like they, it's almost like your purpose in life is to find a purpose and then you get to have a purpose. That's you know a good what I mean? point. I like it's, that. It's weird. It's a weird starting point I like that a for lot. people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think, like, in general, do you hate cancer? Would you use hatred? Oh, How do you no, feel about that? I, I don't hate cancer. Right. But what I dislike about cancer is to know that there are others that have to continue right. to deal with it. I personally don't feel there'll ever be a cure. Um, part of me thinks because there's too much money in it. Oh, you think it's a cash there cycle, is, cash there grab? Is, there is of? part of me that thinks that. Really? Um, you would not believe. There is a little chink in the hope armor. You would not believe what it costs, like for one chemo shot or for one. Can you give me a ballpark? Like, um, let's see, where am I at? I We are in the month of May and probably for this year so far, I'm probably at about a million five for my treatment. Oh my so. God. Um, oh yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's it is insane. crazy. And you know, and I hate to think that because cancer has come a long way. It is not a death sentence anymore for right. the majority of right. people. Right. You know, it used to just be that, like my oncologist even taught me this, that it basically like they used to have a cookbook. You know, if you had this cancer, this is what we do for you. If you oh have this yeah. Cancer, where now it's more individualized. You know, they cater to your. So like they take your DNA. They're yes. looking at everything. Exactly. Everything, family history. Exactly. All of it. Yeah. Yes, they're doing all that now. So it has come a long way, and I am so thankful for that, and that so many people do not have to die from it. But yet, unfortunately, a lot of people still have to go through the misery of the treatments right. and you know, or surgeries and things like that. Um, so unfortunately, I just personally don't feel there'll ever be a cure. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fascinating. So can we do the other one, the other side mm -hmm. of this, which is like, you know when you get in trouble with a sibling and your mom makes you like sit in the corner and hold yeah. hands or like hug or something? Can you say something good about cancer? What has it brought to your life? In, in a weird way, flip the question. Like, okay. tell well, me the best parts of what this has done to your family, to you. Well, because like one of it is like you got to know your mom pretty intimately and your brother right. and like it brought you camaraderie in right. a weird way. It's shared suffering and you would never wish that. Right. But let's talk about what it brought you. And even like, OK, so like I have um, some girlfriends that we've been friends for um, over 40 years. Right. And we, you know, would always do like a, a girl's trip once a summer, like maybe just an overnight or somewhere. And, you know, we always talk in that. But since I've been dealt cancer, we make a much bigger 
effort to like actually do a week long trip in the summer. Right. And then just to be, you know, it's, I guess we don't get so caught up in the mundane daily life. We try and actually be a part of each other's lives. And that's one big thing for me that has just been awesome. Yeah. And that, um, but like good out of it is just, you know, like I said before, that if I can teach people to uh, be okay with someone around it, you mm -hmm. know, not to be such a stigma like, oh my God, they have cancer or right. oh my gosh, they have this or that. It's like, you know, it's okay to just still treat them how they are. So I think that's the one good thing that's really come out for me is that um, I've made people more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, have you ever been bullied? Have you ever? Um, fortunately, I have never. Did you ever have like some adversities that you overcame pre-cancer, maybe even growing up as a kid that sort of, I hold this idea in my head that suffering builds a person. Mm -hmm. It like increases your depth of how far you'll go before you quit. Cause you've already been there. You right. know what I mean? You've already swam deep. Right. So like what built Susan Harris before cancer, ready to take it on? You know, it's, it's funny. When I was in high school, I dated a guy for three and a half years. Uh -huh. And then senior year, right before prom, he broke up with me. Oh. Most devastating. I mean, I was devastated, you know. And, that and it's hurts. so funny because I know that still happens today. And yeah. It, it does. It, it feels like a kick in the gut and then oh. it's the worst thing that well, could possibly Well, what's wild is, yeah, I bet it feels just as bad as getting cancer. You just don't even know that they're different levels. Right. You know? It's right. almost like when you, when you love someone in high school, like you would say I love you to your girlfriend, boyfriend in high school. But then when you actually are, are in love for real, you didn't actually love them. Right. You just didn't know the definition that, changed. Yes, you didn't yeah, know the difference. Yeah, it feels like the end of the world. Yeah, but that really taught me, because at first it was, it was devastating. And, um, but, um, but my dad and his philosophy had a lot of talks with me, and he said it'll make you a better person. And it took me about a year to realize it, but it really did. Yeah. It made me the strong person that I am. And then I realized, like, I don't know, need to rely on someone else right. to be me, to have, you right. know, and that, and I do, it made me a very much more independent person. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. Your dad is a soldier for you. He, like yes. I can tell he has a lot of mental space Yes, in, in how yes. you see the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That, that like calms you. Your dad has brought you like really a, a sense of calmness in your mind. And another thing, you know, when I said my dad comes to me a lot. I could, like, if I am anxious about something, I could even be standing at the sink doing dishes, just being like, I got to do this, this, and this. And all of a sudden, I can hear my dad go, yeah. now, Susan, it'll be okay. And yeah. this, this calmness comes over me, and then I'm good. Yeah, that's so magical. It, I wish more people knew that they could tap into that type of energy. Mm -hmm. Like, um, just paying respects to people that you admire and letting them live in your mind a little bit like the positive parts of all of your favorite people take up some of your philosophies right. yes and some people don't allow them to but it's like i wasn't born with every part of me that i even knew i wanted mm -hmm. but slowly when you have really good friends who are funny without being mean for example right they're like clever and witty you latch onto that and you take some of those skills and you take them with you and it's like you let that silliness live in your mind and then you take it with you exactly you've done that with your dad and just like staying Centered. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. Where do you think sense of humor comes from? Is that is that mom? No. Is that siblings? Is that it's siblings and my dad also? My dad was just an overall, like, unique individual. I would have loved to have met yeah. your dad. You guys were silly at home. Like you guys joked as a family. Oh like, yeah. Farts were funny. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. My mom would be like, "Come on, guys!" But yeah, yeah. especially with having three older brothers or like we always had like family game nights and yes. you know the and it, it seems like such trivial stuff in life but to me the trivial stuff in life is some of the best stuff and one of my sayings is the best things in life aren't things mm -hmm. but we used to like every saturday was a big treat like my mom got out the griddle we had hamburgers french fries and soda yep you know and it's that so as simple. a family and then we'd watch some movie and that yep. but those are the things i remember yeah you know and that the, just that closeness yeah. Of, you know, hanging out. It's fascinating you know? that it's almost always that answer. Mm -hmm. From people who have felt that sort of pride in their family, love for their family, it's always that answer. Like, I don't have kids, 
Um, but everyone who I talk to that has kids are the most proud in their life of their kids. Mm -hmm. It's like the argument isn't have kids because it's going to be easy. Right. It's have them because this is the most fulfilling thing you can possibly do. That's what I always hear from people. Um, you have kids. I have two ch children, but they're my stepchildren, so I've never right. actually had children of my right. own. But I, you know, to me, they are my right. own biological children. Yeah, yes. totally. I have a stepdad, yes. and, and he's my dad. Mm -hmm. it, right. it is what it is. That's my dad. Right. How do you tell me about your kids? Um, I have a daughter, Lindsay, and a son, Nathan. And um, unfortunately, they live. Lindsay lives in Texas. Nathan lives in. Alabama, so I don't get to see them much. Right. And I do have two grandsons and a granddaughter, so I don't get to see them much. Um, but, you know, talking on the phone and FaceTime and that is a wonderful right. thing. Right. Um, but, you know, it's just you're, you are, you're so proud of yeah. the people they have become. Yeah. But then it's also nice to know that, you know, they'll pick up the phone and go, hey, I'm having this issue, you know, can you talk me through something and that. Yep. So, you know, it's nice to know that you're still needed, but yeah. yet you've done your job. And they're on their own and they have their own life and and it is it's, it's a very proud moment yeah i'm really sure my is. mom is in that weird spot right now too where it's like she wants to feel needed but also she's got to let us fly kind of thing i mean right. marty's in arizona so it's like he's gone he's doing his thing i'm sure she's in that spot too right that's interesting yeah where you you always want them to stay but yeah you know that's not what's best right. for them right you know so yeah what does your bucket list look like you know, I don't really have a bucket list. Right. Um, I I just feel like I live every day to enjoy the day. Yeah. Um, I would, if I can go visit my kids, I would love to. Um, mm -hmm. Traveling's a little bit tough for me right now. Right. Just because of um, how sick I get. But um, actually, I'm fine with the little things in life, like gardening, taking walks, playing tennis, you know, hanging out with my friends and family, coming yeah. over, you know, maybe making a meal for them. And, yeah. And that, that... My bucket life, my bucket life, my bucket list yeah. is just to enjoy every day. That's so cool. Do you think you acquired that though from, do you feel like you've accomplished sort of the things you necessarily need to accomplish? You know, it, how do you feel about sort of like goals? You know, I don't know that I've ever had any real, I know it sounds odd to say I don't have goals in life other than like, I didn't have anything I was really striving for other than just to be a good human being. Yeah. And when I started That's an awesome goal though. Like thank not you. even people not even most people think that way. That that is a goal. Mm -hmm. That's a great goal. Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a accomplishment or like a specific I need this job or something. Right. Just being a good human is such a standard. And like know? when I started working here and I'll go back to Altov here for a moment. Oh boy. When I was at <laughs> Altov, um I have to say the women in the um office were not nice people. Like, they made you feel dumb for coming in to ask a question. Uh, and that, so when I got hired here, and I was so excited to work at a school, and I said, I will never make anyone ever feel that way in my yeah. office. You know, and that, so no matter what adult or student came in, I always tried to, you know, be, you know, start the day off with a, you know, good morning, hello, yep. how are you? And no matter what question was asked of me, and I've had some strange ones. Yeah. You know, but it was still, it's a question. That's how you yeah. learn. Yeah. You know, but I just, I never wanted to make anyone feel they were less than. Yeah, those are the fun ones, though. The weird ones are fun. It's like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I felt that way, too. Growing up, I, my mom called me the what if king, because I would say, what if everything? <laughs> I wanted to know everything. I was curious. That's awesome. And then when I was in school, there were some times where there'd be friction between teachers, because I'm, like, asking the next level of the question. Like, mm -hmm. I see the math. But how does that apply? You know what I mean? I want to know. Right. Probably too early. I, I just was curious. But now being on the other end where I'm the teacher, I can't wait for a crazy question. Because I've, awesome. I've already thought that way. Uh -huh. I can't wait for it to come up. I love questions. That's, that's awesome. That's like where all the sweet sauce of learning comes right. from. Right. Yeah. Not just tell me what is done. I want to know why it's done. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And sometimes the why question is we made this up because it suits us. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's like there actually isn't that big of a deal here. Right. There's but not a real intricate answer. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's as simple as this is how it is. And it's kind of beautiful that it's that way. That's what I love about math. It's so like arrangement based. Um, do you have any tips for just carrying yourself with kindness? Because you walk around and it's like almost an aura. You can't see it. Like, you know, when you're walking, it's not like you have a cape on or something. Right. But there's something about almost if we just had your silhouette walking, like black and white, and I can see you from campus, I can tell you're joyful, and I can tell you're kind. It's like the, 
I don't know. There's a biology to the way you walk, and, and there's something about it. And then there's something about the way you say good morning. And it's just like you insert yourself in a way that is not, we walk past each other and we both said good morning and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. There's like an intent behind that good morning that actually is like, I want you to have a good morning. Right. And you it's can like, feel and that. It's like, I see you. You know, I that see That energy. I want you to have a good morning. And it's yes. just. Not everybody has that. So right. like, where do you think that comes from? What is the source of that? I really think. It comes from I am just a very happy person. Yeah. How do I we really how am. do we get I want that inside. You know what? And I would I'm love I'm trying to inject that everywhere I, would I go. Love to be able to interject that into others and you know, people I talk to if they become negative or something, but I'll be like, But why? You're you know, you're letting something in life that you have no control over. Maybe it's in the news, maybe it's mm -hmm. on social media that you can't control it, but let you're letting it bring you down. Yeah. You know, and that where I choose to, I'll, I'll listen to it. I try and see both sides and then, you know, try and maybe see what the answer really is, or maybe I don't get an answer. Right. But I also have to know that, you know, I, again, I can't control everything and everyone. Totally. So it's just, so I do, I walk around with life with just, being a happy person. Yeah, I'm that way too. I, I always tell anyone who will listen, like the answer isn't always one or the other. It's typically just be thoughtful about it. Mm -hmm. You probably have the answer that works for your life. Right. You know, to whatever that big question is, it's like be thoughtful. And that was sort of your response, which is like, I'm going to see both arguments. I'm going to make my own decision kind of thing. Right. And I'm just going to carry myself uh, with the energy that I'm not going to let it have agency over me. Correct. So many people let information have agency over them. I agree. Why are we doing that? And then we shouldn't. And that is when they don't realize that how much it brings them down. Yeah. You know, how much it, it, it takes away their happiness. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. It's adding just weight to your backpack. Yes. Versus like when you just carry yourself with joy, new information should take weight out of your backpack. Like it's like, oh, I'd love to hear that. I'm curious right. about that. I, I want to know. It's like cool. Information should be cool instead of hindering. I would agree. Like we learn new things about the world and we take it on as a negative. Mm -hmm. but that doesn't. That has never made sense to me. I just walk around like, well, it is what it is. Exactly. I'm not even going to pay attention to the news. Right. I'm just going to go have a great first hour and then I'm going to have a great second hour. Right. And then I'm going to have a great third hour. Yes. And it is what it is. Um, how do we then, because it, it feels like we have that, intrinsic almost. How do we start to do actionable steps to put that in the world? How have you already done that? Um, I think no matter what, and even if, like how I said, I'll walk past students and some of them won't say hi, mm -hmm. a lot of times I'll do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I'll just do it again yeah. the next day. Like I think we just, we almost need to peel back that film that are on some people that yes. they want to stay. I like, call that autopilot. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. Real, yeah. They're on autopilot, and it's like they, I don't know if it's that they don't really care about everything else or anyone else around them, but like it's kind of like I'm miserable right now, so I want everyone else to be miserable around me, and yet they don't realize that just a little tweak could make them so much happier and then make others around them. So much of it happier. is perspective. And you're a great re representation of that, where it's like if you just look at the hardware of the black and white context of your life it's been tough it's been wild right. what yeah. a ride but yes. then if you ever have a conversation with you and write that context down it's like oh she's really joyful yeah. she's got a lot going on <laughs> yeah you know what i mean you would never be able to put those two together like if we just had resumes of and those two think people I'm the same person. yeah it's yes. like you you would hire the joyful one you yes. you would never know so then it's really just how are you thinking about the world you know it's it's all really perspective um do you think it's our responsibility to be injecting good or just to be good? Do you take it on as like, it's your job, not just to be good, but I have to make other people good. Do you feel that way? Like that yes. responsibility? I would say that's a yes to both of them. Yeah. Yes. I feel responsible to try and do that to other people. And then hopefully by my outwardly being happy and positive mm -hmm. that that kind of bleeds into someone and sometimes they don't even realize it you know but um yes i i actually do think it's a little of both yeah it, it feels like a responsibility to me too and i try to attack life with the sort of 
I want to be the best teammate at all times. And sometimes your team is your third hour class. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your team is your girlfriend and you just, or, or your dog. You know, as right. simple as that is. Like, you just need to be a good teammate at all times. W what does it mean to you to be a good teammate? In your family, in the workplace, like, how do you insert yourself in a way that doesn't just make the black and white of daily tasks go well, sort of like chore-wise, mm -hmm. but how do you bring the best out of others? Because that's what really teammates are about. It's like, right. I want to get the best out of you right now. Right. You know? um, and I do. I think, it, I think a lot of it is listening to people mm -hmm. and to see what you know, what they are going through. And you don't always have to try and fix someone. Just listening to them a lot of times is what they need. Mm -hmm. And then I think that if you can even maybe make them think of something, what they're going through a little bit differently, you know, or especially like if there's someone that's having an issue, a student having an issue with another student, you know, and you say, well, do you think that's actually what they meant? Or is that the way you're hearing it? Right. Have you actually spoken to them? You know, and that, so then I think that that helps by interjecting and then getting them to see it in a different view. Because, again, as you know, almost back to the beginning of our conversations, that too many people are thinking things are said a certain way because that's how it's typed. Right. You know, and if someone accidentally uses all capitals, you think they're screaming at you. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. we... We're perceiving things in a negative way that I don't think it's, we, not, yeah. it's not supposed to be. Yeah. It's just the way that we're doing it. Yeah. And that's a shame. So it kind of has to be changed on both ends, on, you know, like for the way we're perceiving it and then on the way that the person who is actually doing the communicating maybe needs to realize they need to communicate in a different way. Yeah. There's such a lost in translation there. There is, yes. Yeah. So true. So let's do the big, the big silly one, which is what is the meaning of life? Susan Harris, um, tell us. For me. <laughs> our, our Lord and Savior, Susan yeah, Harris, no, tell no. us from a, what yeah, is the yeah. meaning of this all? For me, the, <laughs> the meaning of life is, I think, life is what you choose to make of it. And that you have the choice to make today a good day or to make today a bad day. And, you know, and I'm not saying that Everyone every day should just be like all rainbows and unicorns. That's not possible. Like I said, even there are days that, you know, I get sad and, you know, have a pity party. But we need to learn that you are the one that's in control of if you're going to have a good life or not. You really are. That's beautiful. Oh. Let's end it there. Okay. That was awesome. Okay. Can I give you a hug? Yes, you can. <laughs> we got to get our mics out of the way. That was awesome. Thank you. That was so cool. Oh. oh thank you. I love you. Thank you so much.